My name is Ernest Hancock, and I run a website called freedomsphoenix.com, and uh, one of our offshoots of that a project, pirateswithoutborders.com. And there is, media has been, I've been an activist since I was a lot of you young guys, 28, I'm 57 now, born in 61, graduated high school 79. So when I came in in the late 80s, early 90s, I saw the beginnings of what's happening. And I, I could tell, and I was waiting for him. Luke Radowski, we are changed with someone that could have the voice of the people that knew there was a problem, but they didn't have quite a beat on what it was. Well, Luke is, I've been a big fan of Luke, and I'm gonna turn it to Luke Radowski from We Are Changed to tell us where we are now in being able to get the message out. What message? Leave me aloneism. All we want is to be able to freely express ourselves, be able to take care of ourselves be left alone to do what you want. That was the promise. That's why my radio show, Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock, is the Declaration of Independence had a big impact on me. The only purpose of government was to defend individual rights. When it doesn't do that, it's time to alter or abolish. And I'm like, yeah, we need to definitely some altering, if not abolishing. So I'm looking for, with Christina, United We Stand, next, a lot of these people we know, and we know their heart's in the right place, to make sure that we are able to live our lives unmolested by others. That was the promise of what government was going to do, was allow us to be free to have our own plan instead of having one you know, uh, forced upon us with coercion. So that idea has kind of gone away. And when you express it, all oh, the controls come in. The media is controlled. When you have your own alternative media, then they start coming after you and want to shut you down. Luke, tell us about that. Well, that was a very professional introduction. Uh, <laughs> my name is Luke Kodowski of WeAreChange.org, and I have no idea <laughs> what I'm doing or what I have been doing. Um, but Inspiring. I don't know. We, we just do crazy stuff. We go to places like Somalia and Venezuela and do on-the-ground independent media reporting. We confront politicians and justices, major protests, riots. Anywhere where there's a Molotov thrown, we're usually there with a camera trying to run away from either the police or protesters who want to beat the crap out of us. Uh, but, uh, you know, you brought up a very, very interesting point with media because really uh, I think we are kind of on a precipice of really great, incredible, beautiful, beautiful sovereignty, freedom, and uh, technological advancements that could really help civilization and humanity reach its fullest potential. And I know that's why the, a lot of the work that you're covering deals with the kind of new science, the new technology, the kind of advancement of innovation and taking it and using it with people instead of governments and ma major corporations. But at the same time, when we have this huge potential and this beautiful thing called the World Wide Web where we could all communicate with each other, there's no censors. At the same time, I think we're also at a point in time where we're facing the worst of all possibilities, and that's the government and technocrats taking over and using this technological uh, advancement to enslave human society and to control all, all of us and to censor all of us, just like we had a boom in the printing press, uh, that kind of new technology came out and newspapers came out, people started reading and getting informed and finding out what's going on. That is a huge threat against the power establishment and the people who really wield a lot of the control of our society. So right now we're facing a lot of censorship, a lot of blacklisting, a lot of just consolidation of media, just like we see TV being controlled by five major conglomerates controlling over 90% of all media. We're kind of seeing the same kind of turn right now, and I think we're really at, we're really at a precipice where we either uh, are going to be totally free or totally enslaved, and uh, I think your work kind of pushes for that total freedom. You know, freedom. I tell you what it is, Luke, is from, it's a perspective. When I was Luke's age, you know, a billion years ago, this was a, the internet first started and you get your first emails in the early 90s and so on. And all of a sudden, immediately, you start finding liberty-oriented activists around the country that were putting up with the same kind of legislation at the local city, municipal, county, state level, same legislation being put. And we start to go, wow, this is like a concentrated effort to shut us down. Well, that was the beginning of the BBSs, the bulletin boards. You'd, you know, into somebody's server in their back room or something, and you would communicate. You would upload your uh, emails, you'd download, and then you'd go off, you know, because it costs per minute or something. That decentralized nature of it was the threat. 
all of a sudden, here came the World Wide Web. Or, oh, yeah, man, the World Wide Web. And then they put you all on, you know, a, a funnel into prism, and they're tracking everything. Well, as time went on, it got worse, and we could see what was happening. There will come a time, and it's very close, and Nexus is a big part of this. Nexus and a lot of other decentralized efforts with like cryptocurrencies and so on. What that allows is for us to be able to communicate, pirate communication, hailing frequencies invisible to the crown, where they don't, it's like you do these app signal or something and you go, yeah, it's encrypted messaging. Yeah, but I mean, this, a week before you guys were complaining about metadata and who you're communicating with and how long and what you were saying and the packets and the data, all of that, now you do these encrypted messaging, but they mapped out your contact list. They know everybody that you're communicating with, how much and how much you're saying. I'm going, what's this freedom guy saying to that freedom guy? It's something about freedom probably. But they're mapping out your networks. We need hailing frequency, frequencies invisible to the crown that they don't even know that you're communicating and that's coming and that's what they're afraid of. Because when guys like Luke are out there ambushed and you know, going up to kiss him to say, so tell me what they, you know, he does all this stuff, they don't like it. And they're gonna be, I've known going, Luke, man, here they come. Well, here they come, but just in time, Technology is going to allow us individuals to communicate directly with others and it be organic that we are going to be able to communicate. And the truth button is out there and you're going to be able to find the information that you want. The way the internet was starting in the early 90s, I experienced it. I saw the, 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 the power behind information. Well, now you're starting to see and they're not, you know, they're not your friends on Facebook. They're Zuckerberg's and his friends, whoever they are. So this is what we're fighting. And it's been so obvious over the past few, even months, if not the last year or two, that you're being targeted. Well, it's definitely escalating. We have to understand we have this like potential of being able to communicate freely. We also have the potential of being all thrown in jail just for expressing ideas, which is slowly coming Alien into the- invisible the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we have to understand here, uh, when we have the big technocrats, we have to understand that there's a bigger agenda here. There's not only big money here, there's also psychological warfare. When you're on Facebook, uh, they show you what they want you to see. They're the ones controlling the view counts. They're controlling what, what's in your newsfeed. They're the ones manipulating reality to tell you, oh yeah, Jake Paul and Logan Paul, they're popular, you should all follow them. And then henceforth, they become popular because of the sway and pressure and push and promotion that these guys get. And then when you question authority, you get hit hard. And we've been hit extremely hard, not only with YouTube demonetization, uh, no. YouTube even, uh, from what I heard, reached out to a third company that I had a contract with, told them to end the contract because of my blacklist that, that I'm on. You used to put in my name, people used to interview me, uh, you know, and I found this out, verified this through a number of people. One specifically was my friend in India who did an interview with me, put my name in the video, automatically demonetized. I did another video, the same thing, guy interviewed me, put my name in the video, automatically demonetized all the way from Thailand. They took out, <laughs> they took out my name, both of them, and then uh, set the YouTube video to be reviewed. Once the video was reviewed without my name in it, automatically monetized. Uh, so so that's you know, I, what, there's what one new happen. thing yeah. you can comment on. Do you ever do live Facebook stuff? Well, yeah, so we, okay, do, we this, do live on the, all formats. This is the one thing that I didn't know that just came to my attention. As you're live, broadcasting on Facebook, people can set their emotions, you know, like not only I, I like this, well, not only do I like it in real time, there's like a stock ticker at the bottom that you do emotional emoticons. Yep. And they, who wants that? Who wants to know how you feel live about someone speaking about it? If they're doing it right now, you're sitting in there going, ooh, we need data on that. Who wants this data? Who's going to use this data and what are they going to use yeah, it and for? And we have to understand Facebook already ran psychological studies seeing how they could manipulate yep. your emotions through the news feed. So they went out of their way and unsuspecting Facebook users were uh, thrown into this psychological test where they were meant to feel sad, where they were meant to feel anger, when they were meant to feel happiness. And this was all manipulated uh, through social media. And we have to understand here, there's a bigger <laughs> game here because if people, uh, and especially big institutions and social media organizations and these big technocrats could make us feel empty, could make us feel angry, could make us feel sad. We're at a lower state of vibrational being, which means you're easier to sell products to, you're easier to control, you're easier 
easier to manipulate. And that's the huge game that we're seeing right now. And even though, you know, Facebook and YouTube were great ways for people like me to get started and get a huge audience and be able to reach millions and millions and millions of people, at the same time, right now, it's a double-edged sword and it's striking back in the opposite direction and it's hitting us hard. You know, one thing, uh, pre-search, uh, Colin Pape, that, you know, be hearing from later, the concept is if you go to Google, I remember when it first came out, I have uh, four children, 11 grandkids. So I'm seeing, you know, from the beginning how it influences them. I remember when MySpace came out and they're putting up their, you know, favorite playlists and their favorite quotes and books and this and that. And you know, I'm going, you know, there's somebody back there going, <laughs> you know, thank you for playing. We need this information. Then Rupert Murdoch buys MySpace for 380 million. For what? The data. This is how important this stuff is. So I, I, I see this accumulation of data and we have entire generations here in America and of course around the world that are being scanned and- Data mined. Uh, yeah, well it's more than that. It's an emotional, they're classified. And then you do a DNA test and all of a sudden seven year olds are gonna be off with hellfire missiles because they're too much like William Wallace or something. And you think I'm kidding. This is how bad this stuff is getting. We. Need, and, and what's amazing is all this data that we're supplying, we don't get access to. It's not, it's not like ours. And what do you do? I agree. I totally agree. It pops up. You want to read it? Nah, I, don't, well, I agree. And this is, we have to change this. Well, that's what technology is going to be doing. And Colin Pape from uh, uh, Pre-Search, what if you had a search engine that you could turn on how much advertising? Yeah, I'm looking for vacations in the Caribbean or something. And all of a sudden you get a bunch of ads. Cool, I'll, you do that. You know, you can market me. Rest of it, not so much. Or the algorithm on how you're searching. If you start doing it, it gets better and better with your searching. But that is blockchain encrypted yours. Nobody else gets to see that. I just want the option. I want the power of technology without selling my soul or opening my soul for them to manipulate how and what I think to serve their interest instead of mine, which is I just want to be left alone. And the media, the independent media, as it rose up, we could see this coming as young activists when I was this age. And we were like, oh yeah, we're building it. But I don't put a lot of effort for years since 09, 10 in the Facebook or YouTube. We have in, Instagram and Pinterest and all that. I'm going, no, no, no. When this becomes decentralized, when this becomes private, when we, you're going to see us push pirates without borders.com, you're going to find there's a whole bunch of philosophy on there, the letters of Captain Mark and reprisal and the ship and the categories and the tech. And I, you go there and you'll see the future. And Luke Radowski is going to be right on the edge of the tip of the spear with his chest out and, you know, and the man trying to explain it to him. Well, he's got, uh, you know, some resistance. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to see me do some stupid stuff and risk my life for a news story, uh, check out our YouTube channel. <laughs> but, yeah, I think one, one, of the key <laughs> this <week. laughs> one of the key principles that I think we're all bringing up here is the basic one that information is power, knowledge is power. These big technocrats, these big government institutions, these corporations totally understand that. That's why the NSA uh, collects so much information on you. So those Google, so they're those afraid. Amazon, they're collecting as much information as they can because they empower themselves that way. Uh, but they're doing it from a kind of a lacking sinister profit motive way. Uh, and we have to understand, we have to take that power back and decentralization, decentralization is key, not using Amazon, moving away from all these big technocratic platforms and supporting decentralized, decentralized platforms is really going to be the key. If it's going to happen, I don't know. But if it doesn't, the future doesn't look so bright, uh, to be honest. You know, honest that's one thing with Christine. I've been a big supporter of all her efforts for years because, uh, you know, I, I was an election activist and I ran for Secretary of State, you know, twice over the years, county recorder for the elections, you know, big emphasizing on accuracy. Well, I, I don't trust them. I don't trust the computers. I don't trust. I don't trust. But now the technology gives you to where, yeah, you, you can argue later whether democracy or voting, you, you, you think you can vote yourself free. You know, I mean, it, it, that's a whole nother discussion. But the first thing is it has to be accurate, has to be transparent, has to be open, has to be free and equal. And the thing is, is that if we don't at least attempt that, we can't even come to the decision of whether democracy is even a method or it works. Or it, we have to do that first. Christina has been working on that hard. And I'm like, you know, I, I, I want to help so we can get to the next discussion. Do we need a central plan for us? Be your own central plan. Agreed. All right. That's our Peace. time. Thank you.